quite unique in that it's Europe's largest outdoor festival, music festival that is. Um, and it differs from a number of other outdoor events in that it very much targets specific groups within the lesbian and gay community. We like to think that there is something for everyone at the festival rather than just a pop concert. This is the 68th meeting. This is the last one before the festival. Don't want this to drag on too long. You all know what we're supposed to be doing. Can I have the apologies? Have we got the apologies meeting? No. No, no apologies. Fine. Mm. Right, let's pass on something. It looks even more wonderful, which is the financial report. Mm. OK, now the financial report is in two parts. I'll put it in the centre of the table. So we've got ten pages of uh, figures to feast on this <coughs> week. The way it's going at the moment is we have a cash flow problem. Um, and if all these checks were paid in, then we would be minus £15,000, which of course we can't do because we haven't got an overdraft. Now, it's not as bad as that because Lambeth haven't actually asked for their £10,000. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> Four o'clock this afternoon, Mario. I've had your what? deposit yet, and I said you hadn't asked for it. I said, oh, well, I'll send you a fax then. Fine. <laughs> okay, so that changes that one. Yeah, one right. <laughs> one. The good so that, news that, is that it's only £10,000. Good. So oh. no, no more. So we do have a severe cash flow. <laughs> <laughs> Our budget target is £50,000 for the day collection. Mm. Um, and we need to get 100 collectors. We got 30,000 last year on was it 43? 43. 43 collectors. So I'm fairly confident that if we can get 100 collectors, we'll get the 50,000. Pride is one of these things that everyone has a very keen interest in, and there's a limited amount that anyone can put into the event or we can accept into the event. And I find that's what keeps me going, that's that challenge to actually balance that, keep as many people as possible happy. Whereas outreach, um, right from the beginning, felt very strongly that the issue we wanted to articulate politically this year had to be issues of major law reform or social issues and legal issues of oppression. Stonewall seemed to think very much that we were in a position to, for example, celebrate the things that make us, you know, um, uh, you want acceptable to the community at large. So they want to celebrate our relationships with our parents, for example. That's our job. We're a lob lobbying organisation. Uh, other organisations focus on direct action. Uh, they want people to see um, the injustice, so they will draw attention to the injustice. We want people to see the way out of that injustice, to see the injustice is wrong and how you get it. Until certain basic rights have been won, we are not within a position to determine the whole tone of a Pride March around the issues of celebrating our normality, if you want. I'm aware that the Pride March itself is going to be divided into particular banners um, highlighting the issues that face lesbians and gay men. Today, gay parenting, um, age of consent, SNM or consensual SNM acts, um, cruising and cottaging laws, etc. Um, and I think they're all very important issues for the lesbian and gay community, but I think it's quite disgusting that the issue of race hasn't been raised at all. Um, I think it's foolhardy to believe that lesbian and gay communities is, is void of racism. There's been a lot of dialogue on the letters page about whether or not we should have separate tents, um, some for, some anti. Then we've had discussions about um, women's involvement, say, on the main stage, how many dykes there are, are there women who, say, would be of more interest to a gay male audience than a lesbian audience? We've been seen as, well, OK, all, di all disabled people will need in order to spectate at the march at the festival is to, you know, have wheelchairs, St John's around, the rest tent, whatever. But there's no recognition that disabled lesbians and gays actually want to participate in the march or to participate in the festival. Hence, there were only two out disabled acts last year and there were no out disabled acts on the main stage. So what is that saying about representation of disabled lesbians and gays within the community?
I came out to my family when I was 16, 17. They weren't happy about it. They, and you know, I can understand in a way, you know, that, that one of their children has actually turned out to be not the norm sort of thing. But they've never actually discussed my sexuality with me. They've never actually had a tidy, held a tidy conversation with me about it. So for the past eight years, I haven't really spoken to them because they just can't accept what or who I am. So the only people that really accept me for me are my grandparents on my father's side of the family. So if you just hold that a moment, and if you remember the important things to remember about Make it. sure everything's on automatic. Automatic, yeah, and then you want your, um, your steady shot. Oh, Best oh. to leave that on yeah. all the time, yeah, and then you're covered for every eventuality. Now the batteries, basically there's three batteries, each which have got two hours charge, yeah? Right, fine. And then you just click on, if you remember, from the training day. Yeah. Hi. My name's Leslie, Leslie Gordon. It's the day before Pride. We've all finished work and we're just sort of relaxing. Um, everybody's in the spirit of things. We're having a champagne breakfast tomorrow. Me and my flatmates, who I'll obviously introduce to you one by one, or probably they will just introduce themselves because that's just the kind of people they are. My name's Tracy and I've got some missing here. Tracy's one of my friends. Tracy's in the bottle. I'm Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try her. Um, I'm Tracy. Tracy's in the bottle. 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 I'm Tracy. I reckon it's just Tracy really fancy her luck tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the camera. Do you remember that's where the batteries yeah, go on yeah. at the back there? Right, okay then, so we've got your stick here, your tapes. Yeah. Five, 90 minutes. Uh, Are they 90 minutes ones? Each one's 90 okay. minutes worth, yeah. So. Well, for me, the first time I went to parents' group, I suddenly felt 300% better, yeah. simply because none of these parents were strange, peculiar people with pointed green ears or anything, <laughs> or two heads, you know, like Kath said. They were dead ordinary parents, each with either a lesbian daughter or a gay son, in some cases more than one. And of course I came home walking on air thinking, oh God, what, what on earth am I worrying about, mm. you know. Well, it's nice to be able to talk to somebody who's felt the same oh, way as you have. That's a relief, really, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't go rushing out to tell your neighbours. No. no. It's something that you need mm. to adjust to and to get used to. But we do, we get a similar reaction to um, do, to our mm. children, but the reaction that they get. When, we when also we know, out. don't we, who, who we can talk to. Our you child, know instinctively yeah. who's out You pick the easy ones first. You do. <laughs> I really feel that it's been an immense privilege. Mm. Absolutely tremendous. And now my life's set in a totally new direction mm. because of Yes, mine has too. Yeah. I think yours has. Well, mine has really was being involved with the village charity. That's um, right. Working in the charity yeah. shop. Yeah. yeah. Along and with all the other training. volunteers. Yeah. yeah. And now there's a flag and that's mm. na national where before we just sort yeah. of worked around and we've, we've actually got um, a stall this year of Pride. Yeah. Um, yeah. An information stall in the, in the health tent we've been asked to. So that's yeah. recognition mm. at last. We've been planning um, to. That was an, an absolutely marvellous revelation to go mm. to London to, to uh, go on to Pride, Pride. Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. see the thousands town. and thousands of young people. That's right. Well, people of all ages there. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And then to see the newspapers the next day with not a mention mm. Mm. makes parents just so angry. I w always work it out like this. In a population of 60 million, if one in ten is lesbian or gay, that's six million. That must be 12 million parents. That must be 24 million grandparents. So if you add it all up, and aunties and uncles and brothers and sisters, then everybody really has got a connection. There aren't many oh, left. Yeah. There's nobody left, no. is there? No. So I, c I really can't understand what all the fuss is about. What we really don't know is this. Uh, is it the case that it's all been a mistake, a kind of hangover from Judeo-Christian society? Really, there's nothing wrong with lesbian and gay people. As soon as everybody realises there's one next door, they'll all come down, stop worrying about it, it won't be an issue anymore, just go away, and we'll worry about something more important like the environment. Alternatively, it might be that the way lesbian and gay people uh, live and love really is some kind of fundamental affront 
to capitalism and patriarchy and the kind of organisation of society that we live in. So in other words, there really is a danger here. Lesbians and gay men really are offering a challenge to society and therefore the bigots are right. I mean, they are right to see that the things they believe in are under threat. Now, if the latter is the case, uh, then obviously we're going to conduct our campaigns in quite a different way. It's just a natural thing, the way you're looking at me. My name's Hannah. This is my sister, Sophie. Here's her mum, Karen. And here's my mum, Heather. Hi, this is George, my partner. My friend Jude, my friend Carol, my friend Mel, I'm Chris, and this is little Brendan. I look after him and his brother Rory. Rory's in the crash at the moment. We're at the tent, family. <laughs> this is my mother, I'm this is my brother. This is my brother, this is, my this is our mother, this is and this is a friend of ours from Oxford at Craig. Craig. Very Aryan. <laughs> nice. So where have you come from? Reading. Oxford. Reading. Oxford. Reading. Oxford. Reading. Oxford. And Oxford. So how do you feel about your two sons? She loves it. It's better than the heterosexual world, isn't it really? She dragged us here. She dragged us down here today. <laughs> um, tomorrow's going to be a good day. I'm really looking forward to it. There's lots and lots of people going that we all know. People are going from Leicester Parents Group that we didn't think we were going to be able to make it. And I think somebody's going from Nottingham. We're going from Manchester. Plus there's a lot of people go on the march that have been in contact with me this week. But, um, that I don't know where we're going. Um, we're all going to meet up at our store, which is going to be quite a good landmark. Instead of saying, we'll see you there somewhere, it's all, you know, meet in the health tent. So it's going to be good tomorrow, once, once we, we get all the, the problems of this week out of the way and actually get to London. I'm really, really looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be good fun. It's quarter past eight now, Friday night, and I'm really, really wound up now. Um, I think I'm going to do something really naughty. I'm going to go out on the hair TC, and I think I'm really wound up, ready for tomorrow to really build myself up for tomorrow. Um, the hair TC in, in Mountain Ash is like really homophobic. It's like, don't talk about it, it's really taboo. So, I'm going to go out and really show them what a fact I can do out on a good night out and uh, see how they take it ready for tomorrow see you tomorrow take a look into some big grey eyes and ask yourself if you want to make them cry looking out of them it's just as well Gonna live to see, I'm gonna ask you why. Either way, you got a bone to pick, can't you leave that to somebody else? I don't need you to suck my dick or to help me feel good about myself. Pick a heart, please don't break my pick a heart. Pick a It's very difficult for us not to believe just a little bit of the things that they keep telling us all the time, uh, especially if we're not, you know, living in a very uh, gay sort of town and, and don't or don't have a lot of other advantages of that kind. And the danger of believing the the things they set up about us is very great. And I think you can see this in the extent to which we get overexcited at really rather small uh, gains in, in our situation. You know, a, 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 a new. Uh, co coffee bar has opened, you know, we, we, we must be, we must be home and dry. Uh, th those are tiny things compared with the, 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 the general uh, range of difficulties uh, and, and, and prejudices that lesbian and gay men are suffering from all the time in most of the UK. Um, if you don't like what you see, then you don't have to look at it. I mean, that's, that's your choice. You don't have to be around the park, you can be somewhere else. But there's going to be 120,000 people there this year, and every one of them is going to have a good time. Well, all I can suggest you do is if you object, then write to your MP or go to your local church if that's your problem. <laughs> you can call me what you like. I've had more than enough abuse over 10 years. No, I can cope with it. It's not a problem.
No, I, I, th I think you're the one with a serious problem if you can't accept uh, the way people live their lives. No, I'm, I can't talk to you anymore. No, I'm going to hang up. Okay. <laughs> no, goodbye. Thank you. Who was that? I was just some idiot ringing up saying that he was pissed off with the fact that there was a gay pride in the place that he lived. And if he had his way, he'd get rid of us all in one go. Right, we should invite him to the party. That would have made you sick. Yeah, you cheeky bastard. They make you sick, don't they? There's something, something odd about them. The fact that they actually they ring up and you know get involved. No, was that? He thought he was going to upset me. He thought he was going to get me going, but I just put up with him. He wishes. He'd have got me upset. Cheeky sod. As usual, it's um, staggering towards the uh, event itself. Lots of crisis in the office, lots of calmness out here. Tomorrow it will probably be the other way round. The office will be very calm and the park will be in chaos. That's how it works on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> but do remember this, that it's going to be the most important event that's ever happened for lesbians and gays in this country ever and indeed in the continent of Europe. We are going to have the biggest march we've ever had and we're going to have the best festival that we've ever had. And I am extremely grateful, indeed the entire Pride Trust are extremely grateful to you, the people who give up your time, your day, your pride, to come and help. Because it's with you, it's only because of you, that it actually happens. So thank you very much indeed. It's 5.30, I'm not panicking. We're up in Warrington, I'm supposed to be in London for 6 o'clock. And Paula doesn't know we're not going to be there yet because I can't get in touch with her. It's going to be around half six before we leave here. But I got to that stage now and I just don't care. I've had lots of phone calls this week from people saying that they're going to be at Pride. So it's going to be really, really good tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. The weather's going to be nice. And we can use our store as a landmark. Everybody's going to meet us at the store. So it's going to be excellent tomorrow. There's bone going now. I bet you this is full. So, speak to you again in a moment. I know where one is because I've nicked it. Okay, where are you based? So, so there's his number. Can I grab this seat in a minute? Yeah. Yeah. My job at the moment is to get in a cab. I'm a finance director. I get in a cab every afternoon. I go all over London and I have to get £5,000 by the end of the day. And I'm about to get in a cab and I'm going to go to Stonewall. I'm going to go to Phase Magazine. I'm going to go to the Astoria. And hopefully they're going to give me some money. Otherwise, I don't come back to the office. But we have to have that. I mean, I've got to pay the security people. I've got to pay the marquee people. I have to pay the Green Party cleaners. Um, that's seven thousand pounds in cash I've got to find by Saturday. We did the heaven flight today, so um, it was wild. It's much bigger than I expected it yeah. here to be, and it's just really, really fabulous. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Did you march? No, not in this. <laughs> Too busy putting my makeup on. <laughs> I hope that's not the representation that you're going to give lesbians, because we look ordinary and normal, and we walk down the street and do our shopping in Sainsbury's. I'm bisexual. I'm bisexual, and I'm an older lesbian, and I'm learning to come to terms with it. I'm John, and I'm Wayne. <laughs> yeah, well, we've just come to support our friends. Um, some of them are gay, and uh, we just believe in the call. Well, as you can see, we're nearly ready. It's um, 25 past six. John's in the bath. The clothes are in the case. We've got the bamboo canes for the banner. Nearly forgot those until I happened to see that um, panja on the television eating bamboo. And I thought, that's what's on my list. The bamboo canes for the banner. We've got the canes. We just needed some clamps. When we get, when we get to the, to the uh, tent, oh, we need to be able to fasten the... Um, I'm going to do some of those clamps of yours to fasten the banner to the back of the tent so at least somebody knows who, who we are. Right, but we're on our way down to the Bridge. Are you there? Um, three syncones. Ready to go. Um, see you a bit later. Oh, oh you oh. sexy beast, you! <laughs> It's fucking nice out here. Sun is shining. The sun is kind. Look, all those people at the road, they're us. We're all gay and we're all going to Pride. Look at that bottom. Busy, it's not going to move. But it is.
Number 10 bus going to... You could be having a reverse view, that's not the back line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the Burns group. Hang on, hang on, we haven't got it all in yet. That's the Burns group, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Trying to get off banner on the move here. Yeah. Body positive. The Welsh people are here. elements of society are part of the let's be the gay quote community and that's why I really felt that the rainbow flag and the rainbow rings were a really powerful symbol and that's what I like about it. The big place, um, 18 pounds. 18 pounds. Um, the greatest move against the beginning. I mean the, re the rainbow flag won't take over the pink triangle, the pink economy, because it's a pink economy. <laughs> what about the hat and t-shirt? I made it myself. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I, I just know that it's a symbol of freedom and liberation, liberation and friendship. I don't it doesn't really mean anything to me. I mean, I don't analyse the colours or anything. It's just a collection of pretty colours, but I appreciate what it stands for. It's all homegrown from Leeds Market. <laughs> Towers flags. <laughs> I think if you ask lots of people what it meant, many of them wouldn't know. They'd just sort of say, oh, it's about being gay and it's about pride. Well, if it's about pride, I need mine with a whacking great pink triangle stuck in the middle. Beautiful colours. I love beautiful colours, as you can see. I'm in one of the colours now. Oh, I just love colours. Oh. Mother, well, now you know. Yes, you look very beautiful today, Leslie. Yes, take your glasses off. Isn't she stunning? Absolutely stunning. Mwah! Dean's on the ring hunt. We arrived finally at Brockwood Park. It's a beautiful, glorious summer's day. Dean's looking for another ring, for another finger. Okay, off we go. Another ring ball for the fingers. Just another little gem. Well, shopping spree number two. This time Dean's looking for a nice bit of rubber.
we're here to witness and affirm Phil and Roberto's love for one another as they witness to you and before God. Now I'm going to ask you to come and stand up here with me, facing your witnesses. Now if one of you would take the ring and put it on your partner's finger, and as you do so, say after me. I give you this ring, I give you this ring. As, a as a sign of our ongoing love. All that I have, I share with you. For as long as God shall bless our lives. Amen. You may kiss each other. <laughs> Your mum's sensible. <laughs> It's one of the best times of the year when gay people can get together and have a really fabulous time. I thoroughly enjoy it. Non-gay people, it's even better if non-gay people come along because it raises the awareness for HIV and AIDS issues and that also is a very, very important issue to address. Come and get your year supply of condoms free from the Terran Siggins Trust. There's lube here too and gloves. You've got flavoured condoms, if that's what you like. How many ex-boyfriends have you bumped into? Mainly his and thousands of them. <laughs> Count. Yeah. Yeah. Count. Only one. Well, I haven't been here for very long anyway. Three for me. How about you? Well, we won't talk about I can't that. count, I don't know. <laughs> well, I haven't met any exes, but I've met a few soon to be. <laughs> Never know how much I love you Never know how much I can When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bang You give me fever When you kiss me fever When you hold me tight Fever In the morning a Fever all through the night Sun lights up the daytime, moon lights up the night. I light up when you call my name, and you know I'm gonna treat you right. You give me fever when you kiss me, fever when you hold me tight. Fever in the morning, fever all through the night. Everybody's got the fever That is something you all know Fever isn't such a new thing Fever started long ago <laughs> Come on, Woo! Look at that money Another five hundred pounds in the bag all marvellous <laughs> We started here at nine o'clock and we were pretty worried because we only had 25 collectors and we needed a hundred We dragged in some stewards and they just loved it. They just kept coming back and back and back for more buckets. And um, we've got 7,000 in notes now. So I would have thought we've got about 50,000. We've achieved our objective. Did you see Lisa speak? Lisa Power. Lisa Power. Would you rather talk about this time? Oh, she, she actually made me cry. She was Aww. so good. She's good at that. She was so good. Yeah. I, I cried today as well. So what's going on with D-Ream? There was that risk of oh, the generator nearly packed up and was completely... The lights were off on the open stage for about an hour. Yeah. Um, so what we did was we took the trip mechanism out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's perfectly safe, folks.
What we're doing with Pride ultimately, I think, is celebrating difference. We're celebrating being lesbian and gay, but that's part of a wider scheme in actually, you know, acceptance of difference, which is what it's all about. I think for most people, it's a celebration, but just because of what it is, because it's saying, you know, for once we're in the majority, then I don't think it can be anything other than political. In the park, there'll be thousands and thousands of lesbians and gay men, and we're not all there just to enjoy ourselves. We want to feel part of something greater. We want to move on from one day of celebration in the park to building recognition of each other on the streets the day after, um, the week after, and throughout the year.